Good morning. And welcome to Banker, Banking and Consumer Affairs Subcommittee, where we don't have banker's hours, but we do handle consumer affairs. And uh, at this time, I'd like for Madam Clerk to call the roll. Representatives Boyd, Here. Bricken, Camper, Fazen, Haston, Lynn, Powell, Vaughn, Here. Chairman Powers. Here. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, do we have any members that have any personal announcements? Chairman Boyd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have a guest with me today uh, that's shadowing me for the day, uh, Mr. Aidan McDowell in the back there. Y'all make him feel welcome. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Anyone else? Personal order or announcement? Okay. Uh, have a little housekeeping to do. Uh, item number two, House Bill 2111 has been rolled to the final calendar. Item number four. Item number four, House Bill 2068 has been rolled one week. And item number eight, House Bill 1835 has been rolled one week. And that leaves us with five bills on the calendar. And so item number one, House Bill 2175 by Representative Sparks. Representative, you are recognized. Thank you, Chairman. House Bill 2175 is a simple cleanup bill. Um, current law motion. references fees. Yeah, motion and second. Got it. Got a motion and second. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, Chairman, current law references fees in two different sections specific to the new and altered installations. Um, these references conflict with one another and making the language a little ambiguous. So um, just appreciate your support. Okay. So uh, this elevator bill, I've been kind of going up and down on this bill uh, for about a week or so. Do, do we have any questions on the bill? Any discussion at all? Question on the bill? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Thank, Thank you, you, Representative Sparks. You, Appreciate you coming. Okay. Item number. Um, okay, yes. I'm sorry. That goes to full com uh, House Bill 2175, moved to full commerce. I'm sorry. Okay, item number three is Chairman Holsey here. Huh. Yeah, we're going to roll that one to the hill, Chairman Holsey. I think he's in another uh, room presenting another bill, and that'll move us on to item. Uh, the next item is item number five. This one. Okay, the next item, uh, item number five by Chairman Boyd. Uh, Chairman Boyd, you are recognized. We've got a motion and a second. Chairman Boyd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, House Bill 1853 makes various changes to the uh, uh, statute regarding E-Verify. Uh, one of the first things it does, it lowers the threshold from employers that employ 50 employees down to 25. Uh, it adds a prohibition against rehiring someone uh, that is an uh, illegal immigrant where it's, it's already against the law to employ, recruit, or refer for a fee. It adds um, a rehire to that list of uh, prohibited activities. It also, uh, in the event that an employer uses the E-Verify system and there is a failure or any sort of indiscrepancy there, uh, it provides immunity to the employer in cases like that. It also provides some resources uh, to employers that do not have internet access or employers that employ uh, less than 50 employees. Uh, the Department of Labor has a department that will assist with that, and so it gives them uh, some, uh, some assistance with that. And another thing that it does, it codifies a federal ruling. So just to give you a little background on that, uh, there, was a, uh, uh, there was a case where a employee uh, was injured, filed a worker's compensation claim, um, was uh, getting fixed up and having his medical bills taken care of. And then after uh, he was able to return to work, it was discovered that he uh, had, had fraudulently obtained an employment. It was actually an illegal immigrant, so the employer terminated him. He then filed suit in West Virginia in a federal court uh, stating that it was wrongful termination because it was after a worker's compensation claim. And so uh, the federal court actually ruled that the employer was, was okay in terminating them because they were illegal, and that's, that was the case under federal law. But they did state that Tennessee law was sort of ambiguous in that, 
And so what this does, it corrects that and clarifies that if you terminate someone for being uh, illegal, that, uh, that you cannot have <laughs> any sort of uh, uh, litigation for retaliatory discharge or anything. So, Mr. Chairman, I'll take any questions. All right, thank you. Uh, discussion on the bill? Uh, Representative Powell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I, I philosophically just have a different opinion on this bill. Um, and I think this is uh, an, another another burden we're placing on businesses. And, um, you know, I think lowering this threshold, I, I certainly have concerns about that. I know we've seen different piece of legislation over the years come through this committee. Um, but, uh, you know, I just, uh, I think, again, this, this place is uh, undue burden on a lot of different businesses in, in, in Tennessee. And um, I guess w one question for you is, wh what ultimately is going to be the, out or the, the punishment for the businesses not complying? Uh, and I know you, you referenced not being able to rehire, but, but what, what are the sort of punishments that exist for the businesses, not necessarily for the person. Chairman Boyd. J just to clarify something, Representative Powell, did you mean for not the, the 25 threshold? Is that what you were talking about? Yeah, the punishment cor for that? Correct. Like or the punishment for the, for the 25 the threshold. If they're, yeah, what is going to be the, the, the what what is the what happens to a business that doesn't abide by this? Okay, all right. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. The first violation is a $500 civil penalty. Second violation is 1,000, and then it's 2,500 for third and subsequent violations. Uh, there is a, they are given the latitude to issue a, a warning in lieu of a penalty as well. So, so you're, not doing any, you're not doing anything to change the penalties, you're just lowering the number for the threshold, is that correct? Chairman Boyd, that's correct. Again, I just think that lowering this threshold, it's going to put uh, more burden on businesses, um, and uh, it's not good for overall state of our economy here in Tennessee. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion on the bill? Anywhere? We've got a question on the bill. Uh, without objection, all, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. And the ayes have it. The bill moves on. Um, House Bill 1853 moves on to full commerce. And item number six, House Bill 2110 by Chairman Boyd. Chairman Boyd, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Do Thank I have you, a Mr. Chairman. Second. second. Got a motion and second. Chairman Boyd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is actually a fairly simple bill brought to me by the uh, by the Tennessee bankers, and so in a lot of contracts, a lot of a lot of uh, mortgage and loan contracts, the LIBOR rate is referenced, and LIBOR is actually going away in the year 2023. And so what this does is it it provides a replacement index that can be used. It's called the SOPR index. It's it's uh, uh, it's it's using. Uh, it's not international, it's American, but it is recognized uh, that something is being proposed at the federal level to, to address this as well. But it would validate a lot of the existing contracts that actually have LIBOR written into them. And so this is a much needed piece of legislation. Mr. Chairman, I'll take any questions. Uh, question on the bill. Question on the bill. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. House Bill 2110 moves to full commerce. Uh, the next one up is House Bill 2310 by Representative Griffey. Representative Griffey, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize. Thank you. I, I apologize to the chairman of this committee. I ran into an issue looking at this bill this morning. I need to clarify with legal before I proceed. Could I roll this two weeks, please? Sure. Uh, without objection, roll two weeks. Thank you. Thank you, committee. Okay. Which one is it? Three, I think, so 
three. Okay, we're going to take about a five-minute recess uh, while we wait on uh, Chairman Holsey to to come in. I think he's uh, presenting another bill, in another committee. So we told him we would wait on him a couple of minutes. So hang on, hang in there, please.
All right, we're back in session, and uh, we're going back to item number three uh, that was rolled to the hill of the calendar by Chairman Halsey. Chairman, you are recognized. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman and committee. I appreciate your indulgence. Uh, Do we have a motion and a second uh, on the bill? Okay, yeah. have both. Go ahead, Chairman Halsey. You're recognized. Um, this does have a, an amendment on it. It's uh, 013416. Okay. Okay. okay, yes, that's the same amendment number I have. Okay, so we need a motion and a second on the amendment. And a second. Okay, uh, we're, you're recognized on the amendment. Okay, this amendment says that if you employ five employees or less, this bill doesn't apply to you. Okay. Um, I was trying to make it more palatable for those of you who have concerns over it. Okay, and do we have any uh, objection on the amendment? You want to vote on the amendment to add it onto the bill? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. We're back on the bill. Uh, back on uh, House Bill 1873 as amended. Chairman Hulsey, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know that a position that we have as Republicans is we try to, we believe and say that we don't like to meddle in people's business, private business, we don't like to meddle in business and business decisions. And, <laughs> and I understand that and I agree with you um, most of the time until we need to. <laughs> and if you recall, this past October, we came down here and had a special session, and we passed a slew of bills that meddled around in private business and their business decisions because we felt we needed to. Well, here's another one of those that I want to try and show you that we, we need to. There's been a dangerous trend, I think, sweeping this country for the last few years. Uh, it deals with cashless merchant policies. As a matter of fact, these, these figures are two years old, but 31% of businesses in this country no longer accept cash. I, I think that's a, a dangerous trend. As a matter of fact, some card companies are paying businesses $10,000 to stop accepting cash and create a culture where cash is no longer king. You also have big brother issues that come with digital currency and digital systems and digital monetary systems. Merchants and financial institutions and technology companies track the time that you bought it, what you bought, where were you at when you bought it, and uh, all the personal information that goes along with it and all that gets harvested and sold without your consent. Right now, this very day in China, they are doing away with cash and forcing people to a digital financial system. And the reason for that is they can control their behavior. If they don't think right, they don't act right, they don't behave, they simply turn their account off and they cannot buy or sell. As a matter of fact, in China right now, they build, they are building social scores, social credit scores. And it determines where you can shop, what you can buy, whether you can travel. It should give you a window to look through to see what can happen when we go and move to a more and more of a digital currency and do away with cash, uh, the kind of control that, uh, that these systems can hold over you. Actually, even as I present this bill, there are some banks and some payment providers like PayPal and Stripe and Patreon, they have closed and shut down accounts of individuals who identify themselves as politically conservative. Again, that ought to give you a window of where we will go when we have all digital systems and no cash. Uh, right now, PayPal and Square and Stripe and Apple Pay do not allow their patrons or their services to be used to purchase firearms. Uh, not only that, you have to deal with all the, the breaches and the hacking of digital systems. Um, in 2013 to 2017, Yahoo, Marriott, Equifax, Heartland Payment Systems, LinkedIn, Sony, TJX, Anthem, JP Morgan, and Target databases were all stored and all that information hacked. 
then of course you pay swipe fees and now lots of companies are transferring over the transition cost to you when you purchase the good. I'm not against digital systems in the sense of credit cards, I have some. This bill does not do anything but say, cash is legal tender and you can't refuse it if that's the way somebody wants to pay. By the way, uh, it is completely full of freedom. Cash is liberty. Cash is privacy. Nobody can track what you bought, when you bought it, where, we, where you were at when you purchased it. it. It is the maximum amount of liberty with the maximum amount of privacy. It is censorship resistant and it's non-discriminatory. Uh, on the other hand, forcing people to use a digital system is discriminatory because 25% of American people in this country are either unbanked, they have no checking account, they have no savings account, or they're underbanked. So at the end of the day, I want to read you what the 1965 uh, USC code says. It was called the Coinage Act of 1965. It says, United States coins and currency are legal tender for all debts, public charges, taxes, and dues. That's what that bill says. But there are many, many places who are refusing cash. Now, there's another bill I got coming that I'm going to talk about this, but I want to plant this in your mind. You do understand, right now, the Federal Reserve, every one of them, are talking about a digital currency and doing away with cash. You understand when you go to a central bank digital currency, your liberty and my liberty is gone. You understand that? You'd be told what to do and when to do it and how to do it. And if you disagree with one keystroke, they simply shut your account off. And you do not buy or sell. I'm just trying to do all I can do to preserve a monetary system and promote a cash system that affords the maximum amount of liberty to bolster it, to help it, and to keep it. So that's my burden. That's my bill. I'm laying it at your feet. Now you decide. Thank you, Chairman Hulsey. Uh, Representative Powell. Uh, thank you, Chairman. And uh, Representative Hulsey, I, you know, I, I disagreed with some of your remarks. I agreed with others. Um, I think for those that are unbanked, um, you know, that's unfortunate. We need to do everything we can. Um, you know, I, I disagree with you on some level on, on digital uh, currencies. I think that, um, you know, there are some, some really exciting and new technologies out there that actually um, are decentralized and would uh, provide even more liberties for people. Um, matter of fact, some of the things I've worked on in the past, I know another colleague of mine on this committee has passed something allowing us to have decentralized uh, campaign contributions. And I think most libertarians would tell you that that is a positive step forward and the future is exciting in those realms. But, um, you know, my concern is that ultimately the, the, the freedom is in the consumer and that's when they make that purchase. If they don't like the fact that the business will not take that form of payment, then I feel like they can go take their cash and go spend it somewhere else. And I think ultimately that's the ultimate freedom is that the consumer has to make that decision to spend that money. And so I think that this is, you know, again, an unnecessary uh, piece of legislation that's going to place a burden on, on businesses. Uh, I worry about, um, you know, people now having to keep cash and they might be in, in, in neighborhoods or environments where they feel uncomfortable having cash. Uh, I know there's a shortage of coins uh, in this in this country, and uh, it, I mean I've been to different banks, and they literally uh, or different places they'll have a sh you know I've seen shortage of coins of certain uh, you know pennies, nickels, I mean all different kinds of things because um, we just can't keep up. And so, you know, while I agree with some of what you're saying, 
uh, you know, I just have concerns about this because ultimately um, I think this puts an undue burden on businesses. And again, I go back to the fact that uh, in my opinion, the consumer has the ultimate choice. It's whether or not to, they want to shop in that merchant. And I guess one question for you is what are exactly the penalties that you have? What are the penalties that you have in this piece of legislation for those businesses that are not compliant? Okay. Uh, there is no penalty in this bill. It just says that in Tennessee, if you offer cash on an in-person transaction, the business has to take it. And, and I don't view this as a burden to business at all. I mean, it's what we've been using for 250 years. And, and, and you are right in one regard. Uh, I could say myself, if uh, I want to do business with you and you don't want my cash, well, I'll just go someplace else. Except what's sweeping this country is it's applying now in a lot of cases to grocery stores, corner markets. And, and now you're going to burden people. If you're talking about burdening, you're going to burden people who do not have that capability to force them to go across town or particularly in rural areas. 40% of branch banks have disappeared in this country in rural areas. So th th some of these people have no other means than cash, and that's what they use. And I don't think they should be punished for it. And I'm not against technology. Please understand me. It re it's remarkable to me. I don't understand it all. I told you I just got one of these stupid phones that you have had for a long time, and I despise it. I'll just tell you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not against technology. I am against the trends of what, what lies ahead out here when we do away with the ability and the freedom of cash and we go to all digital. Then, then your, your behavior and mine will be controlled and it, it, it's, proven, it's proven out. So that, I appreciate your comments. Uh, and, uh, Representative Powell. And, and, and one other thing, and, and, and I know, I, I don't know specifics on this, but you know, I see a trend, and, and I don't even know if this is allowed. I sh I'll actually look into this after this committee, but I'll go into some businesses, and they'll actually offer you a discount uh, if you pay cash. Um, and, and that's always been curious to me, uh, why somebody would accept a discount for collecting cash. Uh, you know, the thought has, has, has come into my mind, and I don't want to say that this is always a nefarious intent, nefarious intent, but... You know, there are advantages as we sit in this room as lawmakers who uh, want to make sure that we are fair about the collection of taxes and making sure that those revenues are paid and that people are, um, you know, when, when, those, when those taxes are paid and collected, and we, we hear a lot about how that is done in this state on this committee, uh, we, all, we know that well. You know, I think that's one advantage to having that system in place is that we, you know, the, the taxes are paid, the money is where it's supposed to be. And I just worry that, um, you know, the, the, I guess there's some concerns for, for cash businesses. Um, and, and so, you know, I, and I appreciate your amendment. I do. I think that you lowering this, this number is a good step. I want to say that. So I commend you on that. And I, and, and I agree with some of your comments. I truly do. Um, you know, I've just, I represent a mostly urban district and I've never heard of this for my constituents being an issue, so I can't speak to those rural communities. Uh, but I just, I guess overall have a philosophical issue uh, with this piece of legislation. So, but, I, but I appreciate, you know, your, your explanation and, um, you know, your willingness to answer my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go out of session just one moment and talk with legal. We just need to clarify something because we made a mistake. We, we made a statement a while ago about the penalties under this, so I'm, I'm going to have legal. Yeah, uh, I, might be, I might be wrong. Okay, I'm going to go out of session just for a second and uh, turn it over to you. Would you state your name, please? Hi, Jamie Shanks, Office of Legal Services. Just for clarity purposes, under this bill in subsection B, it says a violation of this section is a prohibited practice under 4718-104, which is the Tennessee Consumer Protection Act. So you would be looking at a Class B misdemeanor for a violation under this. Okay. Okay. And we're going back into... And, and, and I'm and so we sorry. Just, we just wanted to clarify that while we were... Okay. And, uh, I, I, and, and I'll go back to Chairman Helsing. I, I'm yes. so sorry uh, that I answered the question incorrectly. Um, here's another number I want to give you while we're talking about this. 78% of Americans, 
support a federal law that requires all businesses to accept cash. And interestingly enough, Germans use cash for 80% of all transactions, and most merchants and restaurants accept cash only because, in their words, cash is printed freedom. That's what German folks say. Okay. Uh, Representative Powell. Sorry, one follow-up question given that. You know, I guess my concern there is if I'm a, if I'm a business and I've got those kind of concerns that I referenced earlier about security and, and not being able to carry proper, um, you know, change more or less, um, you know, and I'm thinking of even kind of small pop-up mom and pop, you know, little businesses. I would hate to think of, uh, you know, people losing their freedom because they've now had a misdemeanor because they simply didn't have the ability to have cash. So I just want the committee to think and reflect on that. Um, I think this is a, a step in the wrong direction. Um, and uh, you know, again, I, I have opposition to it, but again, I appreciate the sponsor and his explanation. Um, rep, do you, did you have a reply, Chairman Helsing? Okay, I, then we have we have Representative Lynch. Yes. Chairman Helsing, thank you so much for bringing this bill. Your wisdom is shining bright to me. <laughs> it truly is, and I just love to hear you talk. And you know, right now, we really need to think about this. The dollar being the world's reserve currency brings great advantages to the United States of America, and we as a people, really need to recognize that. And as we move towards a crypto, what if the world settles on a crypto controlled by China or something like that? The dollar is no longer the world's reserve currency. I feel like this crypto is sort of duping us into going in that direction. And people are really not thinking about that and recognizing that. Today, Joe Biden has nominated someone for the Federal Reserve who wants to control credit, how credit is given, based on political priorities. Yes. Yes. That has never been done before. It should not be done. But they want to limit the availability of credit based on their political priorities. We have to fight things like this. And I'll tell you, I can very well see people in my district. I can see someone going to a Dollar General. All they have is cash. And maybe they do have a card, but they just don't have enough money on that card. What are they going to do? How, how can they really get to another store? Maybe they've got to pick their kids up from daycare. Maybe they're, they don't have a vehicle that can take them. Maybe they don't have a vehicle at all. I think this is a very important bill. I think you're defending uh, the rights of people. I think you're defending the United States of America. And I really thank you for bringing this bill. Thank you. Chairman Halsey. Just as one added thing, uh, our considering this bill is not new. And it's not alone. Uh, states that have enacted or run bills that do the very same this bill does is Arizona, Alabama, California, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Indiana, Maine, Maryland, Michigan, Milwaukee, Minnesota, Mississippi, New Hampshire, New York, North Dakota, Iowa, Ohio, and several cities have made ordinances to do the same thing. So this is, we're, we're not alone in it. I rest my case. Uh, Chairman Vaughn, you recognize. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you, Representative Halsey, for I can sit around and listen to you orate uh, on matters that uh, I find it to be provocative in a manner that not necessarily is, uh, it causes thought, it provokes thoughts for, for whenever uh, you bring some of these issues to us, and, and particularly on when you talk about some of the the higher plane, some of the 20,000 feet, and I think that you bring points that all that we should all be concerned about. Um, but I'm thinking about more of a boots on the ground approach to this question that, that, that you're bringing forth. And that is, as we saw, as we come in and we, we discuss things about independent liberty and we're protecting someone's freedom well, when we impose mandates, we are also taking someone's freedom. And that in this case, I'm concerned about the small business owner. And I know that you reduce the, the threshold to five employees, but is that five full-time employees? Is that five part-time employees? What if we, I'm, the only place that I do business with that, that asks for cash is a locally owned dry cleaners. And typically the, the ladies working the counter are there by themselves because we've got employment issues. 
but at the same time, they do have staff that comes in and that does laundry and, and such. And so they very well could have 10 to 12 part-time employees. And, but they shouldn't have to have, because they've got either one or two persons in the building handling a cash register, being targeted for having a great amount of cash on the premises. So as we talk about individual freedom, so what we've done is if we say, hey, you've got to take cash in this transport, we've taken those people's freedom to defend themselves and create their own security environment. And that's what I see here. And it, it, it disturbs me. People, people should be able to run their businesses the way they see fit. They should, uh, they should pick, they should allow the consumers to come in if they like what they provide. And if these people, it's the same, no shoes, no shirts, no service. If they want to put no cash on their building, well, the market deals with them because the people with cash won't be there and they'll lose out on that income. And they, everybody in this equation has freedom to do what they want to do. And as far as uh, people with cash, I know, and I grew up in the country, and we went to town. And most towns these days have got a Dollar General or a Walmart, and you can buy. You can take your cash if you want to, if you feel like you're, you're impugned by someone not taking cash, you can buy a cash card that converts your currency into a digital format that's not connected to the internet, that you haven't, a central bank doesn't, doesn't control. And so I don't see this as being a convenience factor to really negatively impact the citizens of the state. I'm just concerned about the fact that we're trying to tell businesses one more time about how to do their business. And it's, it's a big concern for me. I, I think we should, we should let people operate their companies and their business the way that they see fit. And then the, the, the question of number of employees is something that I, I think is, uh, can be debated okay. with regards to that. But your, your overall overarching points that you make, I, I think are very valid. I think that it is of concern. I think some of the things that we've got going on I would think that they were all fiction yeah. if it wasn't happening in real life. And so uh, people need to remain vigilant. But in this case, I'm just going to have to side for the freedom of the business owner versus the freedom of the consumer. Chairman House. Thank you. And I always enjoy discussions with you. 31% um, of these numbers here, and I don't know what it is today, but these because these numbers are two years old, but 31% of people who – businesses across the country refuse cash. That means 69% do take cash. So your, your cleaner probably already does take, take cash to start with. So th this doesn't affect them. And again, th we, we don't stick our nose in businesses' business until we think we have to, and, and then we do. And this is one of those things that I think, that I think we should. And it's not an imposition. It's something we've been using for years. So. Thank you. Okay, I don't, do we have any other discussion on the bill? Okay, then do we, uh, I guess we're gonna call a question on the bill. Uh, all in favor of House Bill 1873 by Chairman Holsey, say aye. aye. All opposed? Aye. Okay, it looks like we're gonna have, I need a roll call vote. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Representative Boyd? Aye. Bricken? No. Camper? No. Faison? No. Haston? Lynn? Aye. Powell? No. Powers? Or er, Bond? No. Chairman Powers? No. Chairman, you have three ayes. Five no's. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, committee. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Halsey. The bill fails. And um, now, do we have any other announcements or further business coming before the committee? Any at all? If not, we are adjourned.